five. That might come to the surprise of the guys who were on that debate stage last night. Joining me now to discuss is Simon Rosenberg. He's the director of the New Democrat Network and a former campaign advisor to President Bill Clinton. And Rich Lowry, the editor of the National Review and a Fox News contributor. So no sooner does it get released that he is saying uh, those, those things, Rich, than already people are saying, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not five more years. It's one more year. Five if you, if you are successful. But does this reveal... Uh, something about the president's own attitude towards his re-election. Well, I think it comes off as highly presumptuous. I haven't gone back and scoured all the archives, but I'd be surprised if many other sitting presidents up for re-election talk that way. I remember Jimmy Carter saying, be patient, guys. I have another five years to get the hostages out of Iran. So at the very least, if this reveals his mindset and he thinks this thing is a dead central lock, I think he's wrong about that. But at the very least, you think he'd avoid saying it out loud to keep from jinxing it. <laughs> Simon, uh, you know, the president has taken heat in the yeah. past for being too cocky in the office. Uh, he, w when they had the, uh, a debate about the stimulus, the, he was taking heat from some of the Republicans about what was in the stimulus package and what wasn't, and he said, look, I won. And then back when they were debating health care and they were divvying up who was going to speak at the big health care roundtable, uh, he said, uh, actually, I think we have this clip. Hold on. Let's roll it. We're running over because we went long on the... Uh, opens and uh, you're right uh, there was an imbalance on the opening statements because I'm the president and so I made uh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't count my time in terms of dividing it evenly so now people think he's cocky is that bad good true false what well maybe he has a sense of humor uh, Megan uh, about all this now look I think I think it's important that the president is thinking beyond the next uh, eight or nine months. I think we want the president to be thinking about the impact of his policies over time. I think if he had said, I'm out of here at the end of the year, he'd be getting criticized for not thinking beyond the election. And so I think, I think he is thinking of that. There's a 50-50 chance he's going to get reelected. He's got to be thinking about what happens when he comes back here uh, as the president in the second term. Uh, and I do think, to be fair, right, po polls are much better than they were. He's up in the real clear politics average now they by five are, or six but points. They're, but until yeah. the polls yeah. get to be yeah. 100 percent in all 50 states should he really be saying no. quote i've got another five years coming no, no, up i think i think megan it's fair i think it's fair it we want him to be thinking beyond november he's the president of the united states and i think this is the i think i'm heartened to hear that he's thinking about this i will tell you i deal with the obama folks all the time this is a humble group of people. This has been a hard couple of years for them, right? They are fighting very hard. They're taking nothing for granted. But the truth is, things are much better for him than they were a few months ago. And I think there's just, they're feeling good right now. You know, Rich, he talks about uh, immigration. And he says to the, the questioner, look, I'm only one man. I'm not a king. And there's only so much I can do. And he talked about how, how he had done a lot administratively on immigration reform. Uh, and then took another shot at Arizona and Alabama about their immigration laws. Take a listen. I think uh, that uh, there's a politics that uh, we've been seeing that is so focused on um, uh, a negative uh, attitude towards immigration. We see it at the, uh, in Arizona, uh, in Alabama, and other of these states where people have been scoring political points, uh, taking the harshest anti-immigrant stand. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, that's not uh, the kind of politics that I believe in. I know that's not the uh, kind of politics that the Latino community is going to respond to. Anti-immigrant stand in Arizona and Alabama. Does this kind of thing help him? Well, I think this interview is offensive on a couple of levels. One, it really is boo bait for Latino voters. If President Obama really wanted to do immigration reform above all else, he would have made that the centerpiece of his agenda. Instead, he spent a year creating a new health care entitlement. And if you'd worked that hard on immigration reform, you might have been able to get, get it through. It would have been a heavy lift regardless in the Senate because the, this country is opposed to amnesty, but he might have been able to get it through. Two, these, these states, Arizona and Alabama, are just very serious about enforcing our laws in a way this administration isn't. And I think all of us can agree in this inequality and mobility debate we're having that low-skill workers in this country are having a very hard time. The last thing we should want to do is pile more competition down low down in the labor market, which is what we in effect do when we import low skilled workers from Mexico. That is unfair. It's wrong. It should stop. And I wish this president has as much commitment to stopping it as the governors do 
in Arizona and Alabama. Simon, do you think that the left and the Latino community will be satisfied with his answer about how he's not a king, that he tried, but he can't get just anything he wants through a Republican Congress? I think there's, I don't think uh, the Latino community is going to be satisfied with that answer. However, it is also true. Uh, you know, there were 11 Republican senators that voted for, for McCain-Kennedy comprehensive immigration reform in 2006 that when were asked to vote for it in 2010 refused. So there were no Republicans who were willing to come to the president in the 2010 elections to try to pass something that a Republican Senate and a Republican president had passed just four years earlier. So the Republican Party had moved away from sort of the middle on this issue in those four, those four years intervening. But I just also want to say something about what Rich said. Right now, the net migration into the United States from Mexico is zero. We have actually stopped all mig illegal migration into the United States. It is a profound change from where things were when the president came in in 2009. It's impossible to argue that his policies were not a major part of that. Deportations are at historic levels now. Uh, we've seen a huge increase in the Customs and Border Police on the border. We put the National Guard down there. Crime is down all along the border. Yeah, the truth right. is the president's, policies, the president's policies are working, Rich. Sure. Well, and the, key, the working, key thing is working so well. well Let's do more yep. of it. And if you actually enforce it, the yep. workplace, and the experience of Arizona and Alabama yep. shows, you will have attrition. You'll have people actually going back. When we do that and we substantially reduce the pull of illegal immigrants here, then the politics of this issue will okay. change and you'll actually be able to get some form of amnesty. All right, guys. Well, that, listen, the, the, uh, the remarks are already getting plenty of attention. And, uh, Megan, bring, us, bring us back so we can continue the conversation. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I like the positive thinking. You know, I'm just going to start saying yeah. that kind of thing about my job. Like, i got another 10 years.